بارك الذي جعل في السماء بروجا وجعل فيها سراجا وقمرا منيرا وهو الذي جعل الليل والنهار خلفة لمن أراد أن يذكر أو أراد شكورا وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما والذين يبيتون لربهم سجدا وقياما والذين يقولون ربنا اصرف عنا عذاب جهنم إن عذابها كان ضراما إنها ساءت مستقرا ومقاما والذين إذا أنفقوا لم يسرفوا ولم يقتروا وكان بين ذلك قواما والذين لا يدعون مع الله إلها آخر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونشكره ونستعينه ونستعديه ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى أهله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the title of my khutbah today is to remind us about the beginning of the new Hijrah year, 1446 after Hijrah. We, today is 29th actually, 29th of Zulhijjah. If the moon is sighted tonight, then tomorrow will be the first of Muharram for the new Hijrah year beginning. If the moon is not sighted tonight, then it will be on Sunday. It's about the evolution of time, and the evolution of time is one of the mysteries and signs of Allah. And Allah says this in many parts of the Quran. For example, Allah says, "Who are the people who have made the sun a light and the moon a mirror, and who have made the moon a mirror to know the years of the years?" Allah says, "It is He who made the sun a light for you, as we see it now in the afternoon." Walakamara Nura, and he made this moon also a globe. You know, when the night comes, you are able to see. Wakadera huma nazila, and Allah has decreed for each of them their stages. They go round. You know, the day comes and the night comes, and Allah says, "Why does He do this?" The Taalamu ada the sinir wal hisan, for you to be able to know to count the years. You know, by the day and night going, Allah said. For it, through it, you count the years when he saw, and you take account of time. You are able to know that it is yesterday, it is today, now, it is tomorrow. After, so you are able to take account of time. Allah says, "Ma khalaq Allahu dhalik illa bil haq." Allah didn't create that phenomena except that in truth. You fasil al ayat li kawmi yadamun. Allah makes this clear to humanity, so that people who have the intellect. Can be able to appreciate it. In another verse, Allah says, "Inna fakhtilaf al-layl wal-nahar, wa ma khalaq Allah fi al-samat wal-ard la'ayat al-kawmin yatakun." Allah says, "The changing of the day and the night, you know, uh, and uh, all those that Allah has created in the heavens." Allah says, "These are signs for people who have the fear of Allah." So the mystery of time is there for us to see. Even though sometimes, because we are very familiar with it, we take it for granted. Now, when time goes round, day turns into weeks, weeks turns into months, and months turns into years. And the reason for us to be able to know that we are starting a new year is that Allah Himself tells us in Surah to Ta- in, the, in Surah to Tauba, in Quran chapter nine, ayah thirty-six, that in the idda ta shuhur, in the Allah ithna ashara shahara fi kitab Allah yom khalaq al-samawat wal-ard. Allah says, since Allah created the heavens and the earth, Allah had decreed that twelve months would be one year. You know, it's not. I mean, it's not modern times. It's not the English calendar that taught Muslims that twelve months make one year. Actually, using the Gregorian calendar as twelve months is a new phenomenon. If you look at the history of the calendar, you'll be able to see that previously it was considered to be ten months. Ten months was used as a year before they changed it to twelve months. 
But Allah has said this in the Quran, right from the seventh century, revealing to the Prophet that in the Iddat al Shuhur, in the Allah, that the number of months that makes a year with Allah is Ithna Ashar Ashar, is 12 months. Fi kitab Allah, yawma khalaq as samat wal ard. And Allah has decreed that since He created the heavens and earth, minha arba'atun hurum. And out of these 12 months, Allah has made four of them sacred. Dhalika deen al qayyim. That is the truthful religion for you. فَلَا تَظِلِمُوا فِيهِنَّ أَنفُسَكُمْ Do not be unjust to your own souls in those sacred months. And we know we are talking about the sacred months here a lot. And when we talk about 12 months, we are talking about the lunar Islamic calendar months from Muharram to Zul Hijjah. Zul Hijjah is the last of the months, you know, which we are rounding up now in which Hajj occurs. After Zul Hijjah, we start Muharram, which is the new year of Islam. And those four, and Muharram is one of the uh, 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 the sacred months actually Zul Hijjah is one of them and Muharram is also one of them and the Prophet confirmed this in an hadith narrated by Imam Ahmed uh, recorded that Abu Bakr related that the only Prophet Muhammad mm-hmm. during the um, um, his khutbah in his heart last hajj he said in the zaman kadistadara kahaya he said that certainly time he says time rotates like the globe. I mean, see the Prophet talking about this in the 7th century. He says, time rotates like the globe. You know, since Allah created the heavens and the earth, that is how Allah created it. You know, the time will be going around like the globe. And he said, one year is made up of 12 months. And four of those 12 months are sacred months. Salafatun mutatawaliya. That is, three of them follow one another. Zul Qa'ada, Zul Hijjah, and Muharram. You know, the last month, Zul Qa'ada. This month, Zul Hijjah. And Muharram, they are sacred months. So three of the sacred months follow one another. Then the, the fourth one is Rajab. And then, uh, um, uh, um, um, well, uh, Zul, Zul Hijjah, well, Muharram, well, Rajab. You know, Mudarru Ladi Bayna, Jumadi, and Sha'ban. And Rajab and Sha'ban are the two other ones. So it's very important for us to bear this in mind. The Hijra is important. I mean, we don't know the story of the Hijra. And Hijra means migration from one place to the other. And it is based on the Hijra of the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam, from Mecca to Medina. We all know the story. The Prophet, uh, the early Muslims were persecuted. The Prophet was persecuted. Those who were accepted with him in the early days were persecuted to the extent that they had to migrate, move from Mecca to Medina in the year 622 AD. You know, uh, uh, 13 years after his call to prophethood, he, 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 he persevered. But when things become so difficult, Allah gave him permission to migrate. You know, and if you look at the story of the Anbiya, if you look in the Quran, Allah makes it clear to us. The Hijrah didn't start with the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you look at the story of all the Anbiya, the ulama tells us they all made Hijrah. Starting even from Adam. And they say, you know, the Hijrah of Adam was when Allah says, Allah created him, put him in Jannah. And when he did things bad, Allah forgave him. But Allah said, okay, you have to move away. You have to get away from there to earth. Move away from your sin and go to another place, to the earth. You know? So they say the intercourse, that is, the movement of Satan Adam from Jannah to earth, when Allah said, get away from it, was his own hijrah. If you look throughout the Quran, similarly, you'll be able to see the hijrah of Satan no. You know, we all know in the, in the ark, when Allah put him in the ark, you know, and the ark moved and moved and moved and moved until it got to, I mean, uh, Mount Judy. And you are able to see that he was living. People were not, I mean, it was a bad place for him. They were persecuting him. So Allah made him to make hijrah to a better place. Look at Sayyidina Saleh, you know, and the issue of the she camel. You know, Allah made him to make hijrah after the people were persecuting him. Look at Sayyidina Ibrahim, alayhi salatu was salam. When Nimrud put him in fire, Allah saved him. But Allah said, this is not a good place for you. Move on. And Allah made him to make hijrah, you know, to another place. Sayyidina Musa, we all know his story with, with Fra'un. You know, Fra'un persecuted him. And he killed somebody by mistake. So he ran. He made hijrah, you know, to Madian. So you find out that all the Anbiya, even including Sayyidina Isa, Sayyidina Yunus. Sayyidina Yunus was running away from the people. He went and the whale swallowed him. You know, so all of them, you look at all their story, up to the Holy Prophet Muhammad yes. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, so Hijrah means transition. What it means is 
transition from a bad place to a better place. So the ulama in the, 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 they define hijra as intiqal min hali illa hal asan minhu. That is moving from one place to a better place. Moving from a one place which is not good to a better place for you. And if you look at the history of the hijra with Islam, you will see the significance. You know, it signified different transitions for Islam. If you look at it, after the hijra, Islam transited for an ordinary act of worship to a complete way of life. You know, because in, Medi in Mecca, the Muslims were just worshipping privately. They, they could not worship in public. They were worshipping in rooms, privately. But when they moved to Medina, it became, it became a public way of life. So that in the call was from, you know, uh, uh, it, 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 it strengthened Islam. It was also a transition from being a small community to become a nation. Islam became a nation when it came to Medina. You know, it also, I mean, a transition from being a local affair to a global affair. When the Prophet did the Hijra, that was the beginning of the globalization of Islam, you know, and it signified a transition from a position of weakness to a position of strength. We are able to see that when Islam came to Medina, it became powerful. So we find out the Hijra is significant. And Allah tells us, and it will continue, you know, as the Allah told the Prophet, Allah says, Wasbir ala ma yakuluna wahaduruhum hajran jameela. Hijra is always a good thing. You know, it says when people are persecuting them, persecuting you, Allah says, be patient. Allah will deal with them. But if it is not easy for you to hold on, move to a better place. Do a good hijrah to a better place. And this is why the Prophet Muhammad said, and Muslim, man salama muslimuna min lisanihi wa yaddi. The Muslim is he who all Muslims are safe from his tongue and from his hand. Wal muhajir man hajara ma'anaha Allahu anhu. And he who does the hijrah is he who leaves what God has prohibited to what God has made permissible. You know? So moving from sin to goodness is also a hijrah. So it's really, really very, very important for us to bear this in mind. You know, as we now go into the new year, either tomorrow or next, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, you know, we should seek into transiting into a better relationship with Allah. You know, it's not about, it's not about where maybe you are in a bad relationship with Allah. You can always make it better. Even if your relationship with Allah is good now, we are moving into a new hijrah year, have the intention of bettering your relationship with Allah in the year 1446. And in doing so, you know, I want to recommend to us, we can aim, you know, to be amongst those whom Allah has described in Surah Al-Furqan as Ibadur Rahman. Allah himself, himself describes a category of people as the truthful servants of Allah. And Allah mentions their characteristics. So I want to plead this to you and myself. That in aiming in going into the new Hijra year of 1446, we should reflect over the characteristics of the Ibadur Rahman and try and tailor our life to fit into that. If Allah has described these people as the truthful servant of Allah, whom Allah has promised certain rewards, then I think it will be a good way to start the new Hijra year. And these characteristics I will be mentioning in my second khutbah. May Allah make it easy for every one of us. Ibadullah, istaghfirullah, innahu ghafoor rahim. Ibadullah, innallah wa malaikatahu yusalloon ala nabi. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallimu barik ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in The time of the khutbah is short But I commend to you When you get back home Look at Quran chapter 25 Surah Al-Farqan 25 ayah 63 to 77 Allah describes certain categories of people as Ibadur Rahman that is, the conscious, the sincere servants of Allah, the most merciful. And Allah describes them with 13 characteristics. 13 characteristics. Which relates to correct beliefs, righteous acts, you know, and how a good Muslim should be. And incidentally, you know, the beginning of Allah describing the Ibadur Rahman, Allah, Allah started in relation to time, actually. You know, Allah says, Tabarakal ladhi ja'ala fi samai buruja, وَجَعَلَ فِيهَا سِرَاجًا وَكَمَارًا مُنِيرًا هُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ خِلْفَةً 
لمن اراد ان يذكر واراد شكورا الله says it is he you know who has made the night and day to be changing you know so, so that those who can reflect and those who want to thank Allah can reflect about it so Allah is talking about that as the day changes as you you move from one day to another you move from one day to another Allah now says aim to be like this wa ibadur rahman after, after Allah talks because there should be a link because sometimes people ask this question but Allah is talking about night and day he just moved on and was describing the ibadur rahman what Allah seems to be telling us is that remember you know day and night day and night you know who Allah says ja'ala al-layla wa nahara khifata you know he made the day and night to follow one another you know, the man arad ayaz a karafa, he who wants to reflect, how arad a shukura, who wants to thank Allah. And he says, Look, while you spend your day, seek to be part of what Ibadur Rahman. Allah says, Let me tell you about the sincere servants of Allah. Allah describes them. I will do this very quickly because of time. You know, I will rather Alladina Yamshuna Allah al Ardi Haunan, why the Hadaba Humal Jahiluna Kari Salana. The first kind of study is they walk on the earth very humbly. They walk humbly on earth. They are not arrogant at all. You know? And even when people want to find fight with them, when the jahilu, the ignorant ones, when they abuse them, call you salam and they say, we don't want to fight. Peace be upon you. So if you are somebody, you know, who is easily aggravated, you are fighting up along the place all the time, this tells you, make a conscious decision. In wanting to be part of Ibadur Rahman, move away from that. You know? Walk on earth humbly, and even when the arrogant wants to seek your fight, Allah say, don't fight with them. Allah now goes, one ladina yubitu, one ladina yubituna, le rabbihim sujjada wa qiyama. And there are those who spend their night, you know, they spend their night in prostration and standing for Allah. That is, they do the tahajjud. You know, it's difficult. If you are somebody who never did it before, start it, think, this one thing I want to start because Allah has described it. As part of Ibadur Rahman. Even the Prophet, look, it, there's a lot of reward in it. In studying in prayer for Allah when everyone else is sleeping. <coughs> and this is why Allah told the about me, uh, Allah says in the Quran that I mean uh, um uh akin is salat in the Lukas Shamsi in a second lane. Pray during I mean the sunset up to the night. But Allah now says, Well, Quran al Fajr, and try to read Quran also in the morning. Because Quran al Fajr kind of a shooter. Reading Quran in the morning is uh, uh, is uh, witnessed by the angels. Allah now says, "Women are lay, for tahajjud bihi na filatan lak." Allah says, "And in the night, get up and use the Quran to pray as na filatan." It's not obligatory. Allah says it clearly, "Na filatan lak." Wake in the night and do even if it is two. Allah says, "Asa an yabafaka Rabbu kama kama mahmuda." Maybe by doing that, Allah will elevate you to a higher position. You know, I mean, if, if there's nothing, no, there's no free lunch. That's just the truth. There's no free lunch anywhere. If you want to get to the Makama Mahmuda, you have to do something extra. Nothing else. And the, the something extra is waking up in the night, at least two rakats. And that is one of the best prayers, as the Prophet ﷺ said. He said the best prayer after the Fara'id is waking up in the night when every other person is sleeping and doing two rakats. Because it, it tells you yourself that you are doing this for Allah because nobody sees you actually. Everybody is sleeping, you are your, on your own with Allah. So it's really, it's part of the description of Ibadur Rahman. Those who s- spend the night, you know, prostrating and standing for, for Allah. So bear this in mind. Allah says, Those who fear the Jahannam, and they pray to Allah that, Oh Allah, save us from the Jahannam. Because it is a very, very severe punishment. You know, if maybe your mind was not very stable, you know, uh, I mean, think about Jahannam and fear, fear Allah. When you pray, you fear Allah about it, you start doing things that will keep you away from uh, uh, Jahannam. You know, Allah now continues. And those who spend, when they spend, they are not extravagant. They are not miserly and they are not extravagant. Especially in the UK that we live here. We live here, I mean, we see, the adults we see all this, the tendency is for you to be extravagant. Sometimes you go, something you don't even need, you buy them. When you, many of us, if you reach, reach your house, you buy them, you just put them, you put them, when you, they are just there. You know, Allah says the believers, 
you think before you know you spend your money wisely. They don't spend it's rare often, they don't spend extravagantly and they are not niggardly. They are in between. And they stay between the two. That is they are moderate. When the dinner lie and one amount lie la and after. And the Ayyadu Rahman are those who do not call upon any other thing apart from Allah. Tawid. You know, check. When we could say calling upon anything apart from Allah, it's not necessarily having a, an idol and worshipping it. In life, we worship so many things abstractly, even our our you know our 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 our, our, our personal desires sometimes. You worship it, you know, living Allah alone. So try, you know, and recalibrate your tawheed. You know, when the dinner you lie, you know, Allah Allah, Wala yak to luna nafsa lati haram Allah illa bin haq. And they don't commit serious sins, they don't take life which Allah has prohibited. You know, I mean, when we say they don't take life, a lot of the time we take it to the extreme, maybe just killing a person. Yes, that's what Allah is saying. But sometimes, you know, you can be killing somebody little by little, little by little. You know, there are so many people who are on earth, but somebody has already killed them. They have taken their livelihood, they have done so much, but they cannot actually hope to get anything out of life. Because of what some has done to them, even though they are still living. So Allah says, is well, liar to do and nafsa lati haram Allah will have haq. Watch your acts. Whatever you are doing, think of the consequences in the life of the other. So it's really very, very important in this new year that we are, are get, get, get into. Well, I is new and they don't commit zina. That says the Bahadur Rahman don't commit zina. You have a wife, or maybe you don't have, it is the wife of somebody who gets into your eye. You know, or somebody's daughter who gets into if you want to marry, marry. You know, zina is prohibited. You know, Allah says, Woman yafazalika yalqa'athana. Anybody who does these things, Allah says will meet severe punishment. You know, illa mantaba. Illa mantaba wa amana wa amida saliha. Allah is so merciful. And this is what we are going into. If you have been doing these things, if you have been doing them, Allah says don't lose hope. You are still alive, you are going into the beginning of a new year. You can do tawbah. إِلَّا مَنْ تَعْدَى وَعَامَنَا وَعَمِلْ عَمَلَ الصَّالِحَةِ فَأُولَائِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّعَاتِهِ مَسَنَاتِ Allah says, accept those who seek forgiveness. If you have been doing it, take this opportunity. Before you get into Muharram tomorrow or next tomorrow, Allah says, do tawbah nasuha. And if you do that, يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّعَاتِهِ مَسَنَاتِ If you do it sincerely, Allah says, He will change all your sins into good deeds for you. This is what Allah says. Because Allah is very very anticipating of our tawbah when we anybody who makes tawbah sincerely it's like he who has not committed any sin at all and this is why Allah is saying anybody who for seeks forgiveness and he does good deeds he believes in Allah Allah will change all his bad deeds into his into into good deeds you know Allah now says I mean um, um, because Allah is most forgiving most merciful and this is what we are saying. We are talking about Tawbat and Nasuha. You have to do that Tawbat sincerely. Don't take Allah for granted. And if you do it sincerely, you will start the new year, you know, like somebody who has no sin. Similar to people who have just come back from Hajj. The Prophet said when a person returns from Hajj, he returns like the day his mother gave birth to him. The Ibadu Rahman, they don't also give false evidence. Something that you were not there, and somebody called you, said you are there, and you said yes, I was there. It happened in my face, you know. La yashaduna zur. Believers don't give false evidence, you know. Where is amaru bin lagu maru kirana? When they walk past some evil acts being done, they walk honorably quickly on. They don't stay there doing it with them, you know. Allah now indicates what the dinner is. I said zuga is azu kiru bi ayat rabbim lam yuqiru alayya summa wa umiyana. And when the verses of Allah, as I am doing, I recited to them. They don't turn their ears away or close their eyes away. No, no. He's telling a story. Allah says those when they are reminded about the ayatullah, you know, they don't behave as if they are dumb and blind. So it's really very, very important. You know, And they pray for their progeny. That oh Allah give us our wives and our children. Make them the comfort of our eyes. They pray for their progeny. Allah now says anybody who does that, you know, 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 you know
Anybody who does that, Allah says, Allah will reward them with the highest rooms in that Jannah. And they will meet their peace from Allah. So, you know, these ayahs are very beautiful and very powerful. As I said, after this Juma, because of time, go over them yourself. Quran chapter 25 from ayah 63. And see the beauty of it. And aim, you know, aim sincerely. That as we go into the new year, you want to use this, you know, as the standard which you aim to, to achieve. May Allah make it easy for every one of us. For Muharram, there is also fasting. If you are able to fast, if you are not, if you are able to fast from the first to the tenth, it's good. From the first of Muharram to the tenth. If you are not able to fast, you can fast the ninth and the tenth. Fasting of the ninth was the well, the tenth was the son of the prophet. There are a lot of hadith telling us that the prophet fasted the tenth of Muharram. But when he was reminded that the Jews and the Christians also celebrate this day, you know, the prophet said that if I am alive till next year, I will fast the ninth and the tenth as well. So the Surah, the ulama indicate clearly that, I mean, fight, fasting the ninth and the tenth is in compliance with the Sunnah. It's really, really very important, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. You know, there's a lot of, I mean, a lot of people say that, well, Muslims don't celebrate the Hijrah, thing, but it is a very significant occasion, which we must remind ourselves about. And Allah talks about it in the Quran. Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَحَاجَرُوا وَجَهَدُوا فِي سَبِيلُ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آوَوا وَنَسَرُوا أُولَئِكَ هُمَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ عَقَّى Allah says, you know, those who believed and did the hijrah with the Prophet, you know, are in the, in the, in the path of Allah. And those who assisted them, they are served and helped them. Allah says, they, those are the real believers. And after that, Allah talks about we who are coming behind. And Allah says, those who do the hijrah after you, you know. So it's very, very important that we bear it in mind. It can either be physical or spiritual. If you are living in a place and you are in a bad situation, there's nothing wrong. Moving from there, find a better place so that you can move your up with your life in a better way. May Allah make it easy for every one of us. We have a few announcements. وَمَنْ تَابُوا وَعَمِلَ الصَّالِحًا فَإِنَّهُ يَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَتَابًا وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْعَدُونَ الزُّورَ وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغِ وَمَرُّوا كِرَامًا وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ لَمْ يَخِرُّوا عَلَيْهَا صُمًّا وَأُمْيَانًا وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنٍ وَاجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا أولئك يجزون الغرفة بما صبروا ويلقون فيها تحية وسلاما خالدين فيها حسنة مستقرا ومقاما قل ما يعبو بكم ربي لولا دعاء